All right, so we cleaned up around the head of this snout, right? Now what I can do is use my eraser. I've used uh, direct adjustments to play with its color and lighting. Now I'm going to use my eraser at 100% to start with. And now I'm going to start to play with some of these internal edges and just get rid of the hard edge. But I want to get rid of the hard edge not by replacing it with a new hard edge, but by softening it. So I'm going to take my eraser, turn it to 0% hardness, 100% opacity. And soften that edge. This is only on internal edges, right? Because the outside edge we want to keep pretty crisp. But that's going to make it look like this is folded onto this neck. The internal edge here. I'm going to first use the 100% soft opacity just to get rid of that hard edge. Okay, now... That's the pelican's head coming through. Okay, that looks pretty good. Get rid of this hard edge. Get rid of this eye. Completely. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a slightly harder edge, about 50%, and I'm going to work on the back of the skull here and decide the shape I want it to be. You get to make your own silhouettes here. And now I can bring that flower on top of it and unlock it. So I can let that overlap. And now I'm better equipped to place that flower. So if I do Command T or Edit Free Transform, because if you're using Photo P, you have to say Edit Free Transform, not Command. then I can erase just what I need. Using the pressure sensitivity of my eraser. Take it back up to 100%. Right, and then I can use free transform again, you know, edit, free transform. And maybe I play with distorting it, tilting it a little bit. Maybe even warping it just to fit with my creature a little bit better. Then I always like to have some overlap so that I can erase it away. And this is about 50% hardness. When you make mistakes, because I hear some swearing in the room, remember you have your history. Not only do you have Command Z, you have your history, which remembers back about 50 steps. And we can put in Photoshop under settings, under performance, we can change the history states to be more than 50. It takes up more processing, but you might push it to more like 200. That's just one of those default settings you can play with. For compositing and digital painting, often you need to do that. Okay. So, just one more part of the head, putting this engine together, and that's the eye. I got this eye reference from an owl. 
I like that placement. I have full flexibility. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit with edit free transform. Maybe I'll place it right there. And what do I do first? I do adjustments. I play with the levels. Do I want to brighten it? Do I want to darken it? I think I want to keep it just about where it is. Maybe just a little bit brighter. And just goose a little bit of the, the darks. Maybe a little bit of the highlights too. So it's really strong and colorful. Okay, next, color balance. It's already pretty much the right color balance. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Image adjustment, color balance. You don't want to go to black and white, but I can shift the midtones. Looks like a little bit more towards the green, a little bit more towards the blue, a little bit more towards the cyan. The highlights I'm going to push towards the warms. There we go. And the shadows. There we go. All right, so let's see what that did. It started this way. I used levels, looks like that. I used color balance, looks like that. I could go ahead and use hue saturation, but I don't think I need it. Push the hue, but this way I can play with the eye color. Maybe I want it a little bit more golden. And now I'm going to use that eraser at 100% opacity, super soft edged, because these are internal edges. And this is going to be fun. This is how I can blend feather texture with scale texture by taking away that hard edge on the outside in all places. And now, because I got rid of that hard edge, now I can go to a lower opacity with a soft edge and I can start blending. Just biting away at it, deciding what I want to keep and what I want to have come through. And if you get rid of something you don't want to get rid of, you just go back in your history or you hit Command Z. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Command Z. We're making up our own creatures here. All right, so I've got a head. Now I'm going to go back to my base layer and I'm going to play with its adjustments, image adjustments. I've got to unlock it. Everything else is kind of locked and ready. So image adjustments, levels. I'm going to limit the highlights a little bit. So it's not quite so bright white. I'm going to darken the midtones just a little bit. Limit the shadows just a tiny bit. Okay, now I'm going to go to image adjustments, color balance. And in the midtones, I'm going to try pushing a little bit more yellow into it, a little bit more red into it. See how that just kind of works. So it's good to image adjust all of your layers to help match. Then the shadows, put the little blues back in. So now I've got yellows and pinks and blues that I didn't have before. And I don't think I need hue saturation, but I can always see what it looks like. Whites are the hardest thing to work with because they can change really quickly. All right, now I've got my head. So I'm going to lock that, that group. And now I go to the chest, <laughs> right? A lot of work to do, but I'm going to start with the base and cut it out, clean it up. I'm going to use my lasso because this isn't a great candidate for the magic wand. What's great about the lasso is I can pick my own silhouette, my own shape. And obviously I don't want any of this plant. So I'm going to be working around that. This is my transition into my leg reference. But I get to choose the edge. 
Remember, I have wings, so it's good to have a lot of overlap. So I'm going to keep all of this as overlap for the shoulders and for the wings. Okay, select all that I want to delete. I'm going to hit delete, and then I'm going to hit select and mask and use a 5 pixel radius, a 2.5 feather. Remember those settings. Say OK. Those are good compositing settings. And then I'm going to hit delete, delete, delete just to soften. So once you have a selection active, you can click on select and mask and you get to those feathering options to soften the edge before you delete. All right. And then there's a lot of specialized things within that that you can explore on your own if you want to. Okay, then there's some overlap. You can see how there's stuff coming, and I don't want that. So I'm simply going to go back to my head layer, go to this pelican layer, unlock it, use my lasso, and just delete out from here. I want a lot of overlap, but I don't need it jutting out the side. Okay. Lock my head layer again. Don't want to accidentally mess with it. Okay, then I have this one on top of that. I'm going to move it in. I can always change with Edit Free Transform. Oh, going to be on the right layer. I'm on the right layer. What's going on? I have to hit Command D, deselect anything that might be open. Free Transform. And then I can always like hold down Shift and stretch it. This is to transition the neck into this chest, this rib cage. And now, how can I cut this out? Well, I can try Magic Wand with Contiguous turned on. Hold down Shift. Yeah, it's working okay. Right. And Delete. And then I can try Select and Mask. Okay. Then Delete, Delete, Delete. It will soften it. But then I've got a lot of these greens still. So I can just hold down shift, try to get all of these with that magic wand. This is so much more exact and controlled than using any of the other selection tools, which is why I don't use the quick selection or the magnetic lasso. Because this I get to truly control it. And then I can say, select and mask, say OK, and then delete, delete, delete. And it's already starting to help blend those edges. There's still a little bit of green there, but that's what my eraser can do. OK, what about this outside edge here? Well, I'm going to take my lasso. I'm going to just pick an arbitrary edge. I want it to look kind of fuzzy. And then same thing here, hold down shift, arbitrary outside edge. Select and mask, say OK. Just zoom in so you can see what that does. Delete, delete, you see how it softens it? So I might not even need more than one delete. The more you delete, the more it will bite away at the edge when you have select and mask used. And then Command D to deselect. OK, now it's just internal edges. So I can use my eraser at 100% opacity, softly transition these hard edges. And this way I can just kind of cut it out, cut that shape out. I don't need to worry so much about being exactly in place. All right, good. And then lastly, I have this, this crazy reference. I'm going to use my lasso, and I'm just going to say, OK, I think I want this. This is just to get some weirdness on the chest, because the Pokemon definitely has some weirdness going on on the chest. Different kind of weirdness, but it's fun to play with. I'm going to select the inverse and then delete all of that.